G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at the proposed battle rating changes for September 2021. These are potentially, no, definitively, the single worst battle rating changes to come to War Thunder, period. I've actually never seen a bunch of changes come to the game that are just so tone deaf and just so demonstrable of Gaijin's inability to curate a set of battle ratings that it really does frustrate the living hell out of me. These battle ratings do demonstrate that Gaijin lacks the understanding of how their mechanics play out in their game and how some planes become better than others simply due to the fact that they are getting down tiered more often, but I'll get into that a little later. First, I would like to talk about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Top 11. Top 11 is a free to play football management simulator where you take control of your own club and pit them against real players from all around the world. Top 11 gives you control of every aspect of your club, including signing players, running training sessions, setting up your formation, and leading your squad through the four leagues that run each season are just some of the things that you can control for your club. You can also collect custom jerseys and emblems, as well as customize your home ground. Naturally, Top 11 has multiplayer aspects allowing you to set up friendly leagues between family or friends, and even form an association with players from all around the world which is really good for long road trips or flights now that parts of the world are open opening up again. Top 11 has four competitions as well as lots of different events for every single season, adding to the game's replayability. There's always tons of stuff to do, to win, and to collect. If you're a football fan and enjoy the weird thing called sports, and need something other than cringy TikTok dances to take your mind off the busy commute, or to pass time while waiting for another upload, Download Top 11 for free on Android, iOS, or in browser and support the channel. Even if you give it a try for 5 minutes, you're helping the channel out a lot. Thank you to Top 11 for sponsoring this video. So, starting from the top, we have the JA37C, which is not going up in battle rating. And the reason why I bring that up is because it is probably the single best plane of the patch, that and the EJ Kai. Both of these planes have a new feature a pulse Doppler radar which allows them to shoot at targets using all aspect radar missiles from the ground level. There is a way to counter this, but you have to be in a very specific situation. So these particular mechanics therefore supersede the new ones. Therefore I propose that the 11.0 JA-37C and EJ Kai both go to 11.3. These planes are clearly better than their competition, they have excellent missiles, and they have a really, really good uh, mobility and good guns. The reason why I leave the FGR2 and the FG1 out is because they are very bulky, and they are actually fairly well balanced, even with the sky flashes. So, the JA-37 and EJ Kai not being touched, MiG-21 BIS not being touched, good. The F-4C Phantom II is going from 10.3 to 10.0. Like, this literally makes no sense, and it will make even less sense when we have a look at some other battle ratings. The F4C, the reason why it is being so badly stomped on, basically, is because it is getting up-tiered. It doesn't have countermeasures, and it has okay, mediocre missiles, which are no longer viable in this meta of uh, Pulse Doppler and those low-altitude engagements. This is the type of thing that has been left behind by the new meta, and as a result the Phantom is suffering, and you might think, well, that's a good reason to down-tier it. And you would think that that is a good reason to down-tier it, if it didn't go and face things like the F2 Sabre. Well, the F2 Sabre's on its side, but the MiG-17. The MiG-17 has no capability to catch a Phantom in a straight line, no capability to dive on a Phantom, even if he's making a mistake, in fear of one lurking at high altitude, because there is no radar or radar warning receiver, on the MiG-17. Think about F4C versus MiG-17 and think about whether or not that that might be a good set of competition. No, it's just not. The MiG-17 should, in theory, at most, be facing something like the Crusader. I would say that that is a good challenge for the MiG-17. And that is what an up tier should be. It should be a challenge. You shouldn't be stomped on, which is exactly what's going to be happening here. So, we move on to a decent change. The SU-17M2 is going up to 11.0. To be honest, I think that it's okay at 11.0. It has good guns, and the missiles are fairly good. 
it also has some fairly decent mobility. F-104S, I am yet to make some content on this uh, plane, but it is definitely worthy of going from 10.3 up to 10.7. A good change, seeing as though it got the AIM-9Js. I like to question the historical nature of that change, but if someone could enlighten me in the comments, do let me know. I am a little bit sad that the F-104S doesn't get flares, but that's a story for another day. Yak-28B, the absolutely terrible bomber that no one likes, is going from 9.3 to 9.7, and I have no idea why. It literally doesn't make sense. I cannot wrap my head around why it is going up. Is it because it's got a decent bomb load? No, it's got the same damn bomb load as the IL-28. It's a little bit faster and has like 12 flares and half the guns. It's it To me, it just does not make sense that it's going up. It seems buttfuck useless, and it should remain at a battle rating where it will still be but fuck useless. Italy's F-104G with the new AIM-9Js is going from 10.0 to 10.3. Why it's not going to 10.7 is anyone's guess, because at 10.7 the Chinese F-104G is there as well with four AIM-9Js. To me, it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't, and it probably doesn't to Gaijin either, but they don't care. So, Speaking of not caring, the Vautours, the 2A and the 2A that is in the, uh, I, it's sporting the IDF colours, the, the premium Vautour, the Jutour if you will, is going from 9.0 to 9.3. Just like I said, it's anyone's guess as to why. The Vautour 2B is also following to 9.3, which is even more of a head scratcher, I genuinely cannot figure this out. And to top off the insult to injury, the Chinese F-104A, the French F-104D, and the uh, American F-104D, I believe, maybe, maybe not, no, not the F American F-104D, is going to 9.3. I'm, I'm actually super confused. No, the, the American F-104, uh, F-100D is also going to 9.3. Like, this, this is a really stupid change, because this now puts the F-100s on par at the same battle rating as the Shenyang F-5. Like, hello, Gaijin, these are not the same aircraft. There is a clear advantage to being an F-100, and that is being actually supersonic, having more missiles, having better guns, and having that AOA. Oh, and having that really good afterburner. But, you know, the way Gaijin makes their battle ratings must be so so basic and so simplistic that it does not take this into consideration at all. MiG-19S, MiG-19PT going down to 9.3. Again, I don't understand why these planes are going down. In fact, maybe I do. It's because they're seeing 10.7s and they're struggling against 10.7s. So the way Gaijin must see it is, oh, well, the statistics are low, so we're going to put it down to 9.3, just because, you know, just just because. Let's let's put something that does Mach 1 plus and has really good guns, but is a little bit hard to use. You know, it just takes a little bit of, of brain cell to use. That's going up. That's going down to, to face like the Cougar, the F9, F8, which barely does 800 on the deck without shitting the, the bed. The, Hello, these changes are actually ridiculous. Yak-38 and Yak-38M both going down one step each in battle rating from 9.7 to 9.3 and 9.3 to 9.0. R60s at 8.0 is exactly what we needed, Gaijin. Thank you so much. That is just just brilliant. Just perfect, you know. That is just going to make this battle rating so much better. The F2 Sabre doesn't get any uh, missiles. It has... Uh, less top speed than the Act 38 doesn't get an air spawn, but I'm sure it's going to do just fine and isn't going to be buried among the whole shitload of planes that are coming down in battle rating. You're not going to push planes out of the meta because they're old, aren't you? No, no, not at all. Absolutely not. It gets even better though. Buccaneer S2, you know that absolutely useless bomber in Air RB, the one that I made a meme video on? Yeah, it's going up to 9.7. Again. Why? There is literally no reason for the Buccaneer S2 to go from 9.3 to 9.7. It, it just does not make sense at all for Air RB, less for Ground RB, because this thing now will face the 10.7... Uh, uh, I'm not actually sure if there are 10.7 radar SAMs, but the Gepard and all those other SAMs, uh, SAMs, SPAAs, are better at doing that job anyway. They, they counter the Buccaneer just fine. 
and now it's going up in battle rating a little bit further. So it's definitely not for tanks, and it's certainly not for air RB. So what the hell's it for? It just makes no sense. What makes even less sense than that is the MiG-21 PFM and the MiG-21 F-13 going down to 9.0. All the way from 10.0, these planes have gone progressively down to 9.0. And that's because these planes are hard to use. This is just the worst way to balance these types of planes. What you should be doing is putting a massive reward multiplier on them for when they get more than two kills. Which means they've gotten more kills than their missiles can carry. So that means they've gotten a gun kill. So if you get a gun kill with the MiG-21F, you should be getting a shit ton more reward. But they're not doing it that way because they're tight asses and they don't want to give you silver lions. So they're going to bump it down to 9.0 where you're going to be facing 8.0s and still losing to them because you're still going to be putting the same tactics in of turning, wasting all your ammo, wasting your missiles, and then just dying. Because that's how most of these uh, MiG-21 PFM players and F-13 players end up. I know, because I face these people. And that's just the part and parcel of learning the plane. You, ha you do that sort of thing when you don't know how to play the plane. And as a result, Gaijin lowers the statistics to 9.0. Yeah, A4E early, 8.7 to 8.3. It's got flares, it's got a couple of missiles, sure, it's a shit attacker, but it's going down in battle rating. Yet the bombers are going up, which have even less, like the Buccaneer, I would consider somewhat similar to the A4E. But they're completely different battle ratings. The Yak-30 is going from 8.3 to 8.7. And I don't know why, because this thing is barely capable of fighting A5 Sabres. Yet, somehow, it's sitting at a battle rating that is now higher than the A5 Sabre. So, I'm scratching my head on more of these battle ratings than you might think. In fact, you know what, I'm scratching my head on pretty much all of them. A32A, now this one's going to get you laughing, 9.0 up to 9.3. This plane, whilst being an attacker and is not really meant to be doing extremely well in RRB, is still going up in battle rating for some weird reason. I genuinely don't understand why this plane is pain to fly and it is just not good in air RB. It is okay in ground RB, does not get any missiles, is stuck with 20 mils and is just a big bus. It even gets less thrust than the J32B. So I really do not understand where all of these are coming from. J29F going up to 9.0. It was fine at 8.7. I don't understand why it is getting a battle rating increase. It now sits at a battle rating where the MiG-15 BIS will almost have to be in a full up tier to face it. The J-29F is not that good. It is almost the same speed as the MiG-15 BIS with the afterburner. It's also fatter, and to make up for it being fat, it's got extra missiles. So realistically, it should be at the same battle rating as the MiG-15, but the MiG-15, in my opinion, is too low. And uh, maybe that's another story for another day. Germany's G91R3 uh, is going down to 8.3. Again, I have no idea why. CL13, Mark IV, 8.7 up to 9.0. Why? Because it's an A5 Sabre. No, A5 Sabres don't belong at 9.0, but it's going up there anyway. And the reason for that is due to a certain Reddit post by uh, a bunch of people who got together, sweated in the CL13 Mark IV, and raised its statistics. You can't tell me that statistics are an accurate measure of player performance, or of a plane's performance. It's an accurate, accurate measure of the three or four players that sweat it out and make the statistics insane. So, planes like the F7F going up in battle rating was because of a select few pe people squatting up together, playing this thing really, really well, and putting it to 6.7. Yet, Gaijin still does not see the pattern emerging. Buccaneer S1 going up to 9.0. Well, I suppose if you're going to put the Buccaneer S2 up, you're going to put the Buccaneer F S1 up. Well, F84F on all fronts, all going down to 8.0. That's a good change for once. This plane is a strike fighter and it is a piece of shit. So it belongs at a lower battle rating like 8.0. It is more akin to the F84G. In fact, I would almost consider it to be worse than the F84G. So having it at a battle rating where it is akin to the F84G is a lot more appropriate. All of the Canberras going up in battle rating from 8.3 to 8.7. I genuinely don't understand why they're putting all these bombers up. Do they want to make them more useless? Do they want to make them even worse at earning Silver Lions? Then maybe that's the way that they're going to be doing things. Sagittario 2 going from 8.7 to 
I genuinely don't see a reason why. It's been priced out of the market already with a massive repair cost and is just about as good as all the other 8.7s around it. It does 1050 on the deck, it's good at turning, it has okay acceleration and a low ammo capacity, so 8.7 was appropriate for it in the first place. Yet, for some reason, they're deciding to put it up even further. So, we have the F2H Banshee, that's going down from 8.0 to 7.7, .7, which is actually not a terrible change. The last one that I wanted to talk about here is the Lightning F6 going down from 9.7 to 9.3. Again, I've been beating this horse since the Lightning came out. The Lightning is only shit because it is hard to fly. Much like the 19PT, the 19S, all hard to fly. And that is why they are being lowered in battle rating. Instead, the rewards should be increased in order to encourage people to actually do well in the plane. So instead of, I guess, punishing everyone else in the matchmaker for just existing. And this ties me to my main point. Gaijin balance things by means of statistics. Statistics is what they've used through and through for the last eight years. If a plane performs well, it would logically, by these statistics, go up in battle rating. If it performs poorly, then it would go down. But this creates several problems. It doesn't explain why these planes are performing poorly. Are they hard to use? Are they constantly being up-tiered? Are they constantly being down-tiered? Do they not have enough countermeasures? Do they not have a good enough weapon system? Do they rely on the team too much? Are they super slow? Are they, uh, have, do they have low acceleration? Do they have low turn rates? Do they have one factor that makes them challenging to use? These types of factors, or oh, on top of that, are they being spammed out for events? The classic one was the R3 T20. It was being spammed out for events, people would take a capture point, J out, and spawn in a plane and do the rest of the event that way. These types of things are not counted for by the statistics. Are they played by good players? Are they played by bad players? It's bloody obvious that these are not taken into account by the way that these changes are coming about. Pretty much all of them need to be scrapped, except for a couple of them. Maybe the F2H Banshee, maybe the uh, F84Fs, and that's pretty much it. F89s are both going down. That is a bit of a head scratcher as well. They probably want to sell more of those, which is which is why. A bunch of props are also being changed. And for me, I believe props are pretty much bang on. Like for me, props are at a good spot. Most of them are very well balanced. And Gaijin is just tearing up the balance because their numbers said so. Yet they wonder why people get angry. They wonder why the ratio of likes to comments on the Reddit post announcing this, the Twitter post announcing this, and the absolute outrage on social media relative to War Thunder has been directed towards these changes because they're all fucking stupid. They're all mindless and they don't demonstrate any thought or any curation towards Gaijin's game. If you had half a brain, you would understand that you are putting planes in that are constantly getting better and better and better and then wondering why the planes all around them are starting to do poorer on one side. That's very, very easy to explain, and I don't need a game design degree for it. In fact, I don't even need the statistics for it, because you can tell simply by the way matches play out. A lot of people have stood by the uh, accusation that Gaijin's employees don't play the game, and this was based off a rumor of a former employee who was the esports coordinator and left because he was getting abused by the developers. Uh, allegedly, at least. Allegedly. So, to save my ass from legal ramifications. Allegedly getting abused and allegedly having to take antidepressants because of this. Now, this is probably why. They stuck with a shit old system for years and years and years, and when someone wants to tell them that they're wrong, their stubborn ass is not going to change any of that because they're right and that's their way or the highway. Well, if you want the highway, people are going to take it. I'm not because I make content on this game. I'm pretty much stuck with War Thunder and you know what, for the most part, I mostly enjoy War Thunder. But this, this is the main thing that just irks me. It just makes me very, very frustrated. Certain small changes end up making big waves where they otherwise wouldn't need to be. War Thunder's battle rating system 
doesn't need some massive overhaul. This is a massive overhaul. Almost half the planes that everyone plays are being touched here. And yet, some planes are not for some odd, odd reason. Like I mentioned before, JA-37C, EJ Kai, not being touched even though they got brand new toys and are now top of the roost, exceeding that of the other 11.0s. I don't understand why things like the AV-8A haven't been moved up to 10.0. 240 flares is more than any other plane in the game gets. At 10.0, where everyone's fielding AIM-9Es, R3Ss, and anything else that loves a good flare. These types of changes, or these lacks of changes, tell me that Gaijin doesn't see a huge statistical anomaly because they're just not looking at in the right spots. The way you would do go about this is you would look at the planes and you would look at the ones that are clearly having an edge over the other ones. You wouldn't look at this as, oh, this plane is performing on aggregate well because that's the same way that the Soviet Union used to look at things and they had the Holodomor. This is the such an old, such a shit way to look at things. And honestly, I can't stand the fact that Gaijin still sticks to this absolute bullshit year after year. They need to hire someone. They need to hire someone that plays the game. And they need to hire someone that plays the game so much so that they have a good grip on just about every vehicle in the game. In fact, they've already got someone. They have a particular employee that has literally every vehicle in the game, whether by buying it, grinding it, or otherwise earning it. They have unlocked every vehicle in the game, spaded every vehicle in the game, and have extensively tested every vehicle in the game. And that's Oxy. Believe it or not, Oxy is an absolute mad lad. And he might be a good person to consult for battle rating adjustments. He's already working for Gaijin, just in another department. And it wouldn't be that hard to switch him over to this type of stuff. He'd just need a bit of Russian translate and he would be fine. I, th I would trust Oxy with battle ratings because out of all the people to make the most balanced opinions and the most balanced uh, takes on planes, it's someone that has played every single one. And sure, you could take a bit of opinion from here and a bit of opinion from there and maybe some trusted people that uh, you might say make some good changes repeatedly or constantly, you could throw them in the mix too. But at the end of the day, he would have the final say. And we would have about as much say, or these trusted people rather. Maybe not me. Maybe I make sh have shit takes, but that's for you guys to decide. Maybe these trusted people would have similar weight to what the algorithm says, to what the statistics say. And that might be a good middle ground for Gaijin. But F100D at 9.3, F4 Phantom at 10.0, and Vortors at 9.3, just plain stupid. It actually baffles me. 21F13 and 21PFM both now fighting things like the Sagittaria. Who would have thought of that? Probably statistics. So ladies and gents, that is the battle rating changes for September 2021. They're garbage. They are really, really garbage. And honestly, I, I wish none of these will ever come to the game. I, I hope they don't. Because quite frankly, this is the type of thing that provides or that brings about dead battle ratings. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching to the end of the video. I sincerely appreciate everything that you uh, watch. It, it makes me very, very happy. Um, oh, oh, what, 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 is, what is this, you might ask? It is a surprise tool that we will use for later. Anyway, ladies and gents, if you would like to support the channel, there are plenty of links down below. Especially, especially the sponsor. Thank you to Top11 for sponsoring the video. It's uh, going to go towards some, some very good stuff. I'm actually looking into 4K. Hopefully, fingers crossed, um, hopefully the, the GTX 1070 can run it on water. So we're going to be looking into that. It should be okay. Maybe a little bit of a stretch, but we'll see. Uh, either way, thank you very much for watching the video. I sincerely appreciate your time. Take care.
and I'll catch you next time.